Twelve years ago, I was visiting a tiny island on the edge of the North Atlantic Ocean. It was so beautiful, and with its 55 inhabitants, it became so peaceful. The scenery was like nothing I've ever seen before. When I told people about it in afterhand, they had problems visualizing it. I have later dreamt about showing others what this place was all about. It's time to get wet, cold and uncomfortable again. passing by, and one day we all know it will all be over. And I will certainly not sit around waiting for that to happen. There you go! That's what we want! So again, I made my boat ready to cross the 209 nautical miles of ice-cold North Sea to share my story with you. So let me take you to Fair Isle. It's a bit crazy to, to leave the safe harbor of Ferguson at 4 o'clock in, in the night. It's minus 4 degrees, it's ice freezing cold and uh, absolutely wind quiet. Uh, a slight little delicious feeling of uh, what the hell am I doing is occurring in my head, but I know this is uh, gonna be extraordinary and fun. There's 36 hours of sailing now in front of me, I don't know what's gonna come. But uh, just take mile for mile and we'll see what uh, King Neptune has to offer us this time. I can't wait. Coast Guard again and uh, told them I was on my way and, uh, and uh, as usual if I'm not there in 30 I said it was going to be there in 36 hours on Fair Island and if I'm not there by then if I haven't contacted them they're going to start start uh, a search and rescue uh, uh, mission again to, to uh, see if they can find me uh, I'm just passing uh, the last lighthouse now, so I'm actually in open ocean now. It is about wind quiet, and uh, I'm going by engine six, seven knots again, and, uh, and uh, yeah, it is shitty cold. It's minus four degrees Celsius, so my hands are freezing, and I have problems keeping the boat warm inside. So. I'm just gonna see how things go now. Uh, everything's really nice, but it's really cold. I'm almost glad it's not windy because that will make it even more cold. So, 
But anyway, everything is good, so I'm uh, just gonna keep warm as good as I can downstairs and, uh, and uh, follow my track and uh, just wait for some wind. So it's gonna be a long night, but uh, I'm ready for it. Bring it on. It's starting to occur now. It's uh, <coughs> it's uh, 06 15 and uh, I'm gonna <coughs> go for a little rest. Again, it's really cold. We have our wind straight with us, you know, with downwind, and uh, with that minus four degrees uh, thing going on, it's getting the, the wind is blowing just into the boat there, so I have to uh, close my washboards and uh, close out the wind. Uh, when I go to rest, I rest for about 20 minutes and uh, I put uh, my timer on in 20 minutes, so, so uh, it's about 20 minutes for a ship to, uh, before, from it occurs in the horizon until it could be a potential danger for, for me. It's about 20, 15, 20 minutes. So I just put in my clock on uh, 20 minutes and I go up and uh, I'll uh, have a look around and I go down and rest again. And that's the way it goes on and on, as long as I need to rest. According to sleeping, I, I don't really sleep. Uh, I just close my eyes and maybe disappear a little bit. And uh, I'm not sleeping like. Yeah, yeah. Dream. I'm not going to dreamland like you do at home uh, in, your, in your warm cozy bed. Out here you have to be on guard all the time. And uh, I'm, when you're lying down like this, uh, I'm, I'm listening to sounds and uh, always having a look around the boat, listening to the sails, listening to the rig. If any uh, weird sounds occur, I just jump up and uh, look what it is. So, so I don't think you can sleep when you're in a 35 feet boat in the middle of the North Sea, you know, especially not at night. That's, that's, that's when you're on guard and uh, listening for sounds. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's very hard to sleep. And uh, I have this uh, little iPad. Let's see. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's connected to the, to the chart plotter up uh, in the cockpit and uh, in a Wi-Fi system, so I have a... Uh, I can see just what's happening on the, on the screen outside, so uh, I can lie down here and I can, uh, and I can watch what's happening uh, on, the, on, the, on the chart plotter. I have the IIS and the wind uh, and uh, yeah, boat speed. So I'm pretty happy with that. Makes me feel a little bit safer down here. So now we're gonna have a have a little rest again. Uh, yeah, we'll see what what's coming up next. Yeah, and the, and the wind is pretty good. It's 14, 15 knots of wind, downwind now. So I have. Uh, I think I can put out my engine pretty soon and just go for sale. Looking forward to that. All right, nighty night. Now from uh, 
from where I started, 60 nautical miles offshore, and the wind is still uh, just downwind, and it's a terrible angle. It's impossible to feel my uh, sails with the wind. The wind is changing all the all the time. It's it's the, it's the worst angle uh, to have to have, uh, have have the wind to your boat. And we have some pretty huge swells as well, which uh, which wants to put put my boat, of course, all the time. And uh, but now I've uh, been hoisting my mainsail to to try to balance the boat out a little bit more and. Uh, and it looks to be uh, working. I was hesitating to do it because of the waves, and I, I don't want to run around on deck too much. So, but now I uh, I couldn't help it. I just had to get get the sail up, and I think I think it's uh, done the trick now. So about the safety harness, uh, I, I rarely use the safety harness. I know it sounds crazy, but on my boat <coughs> I have a lot of winches and things to. Uh, that the, uh, that the safety uh, harness can catch up in and I can stumble around, stumble and fall and hit myself really bad. So I think the chances of falling overboard is slight to none compared to what they are to, to fall on deck and really hurt myself. Uh, I feel much more free and uh, mobile without the harness. I know it sounds crazy but it's just my way to do it. I don't, you don't have to follow my advice well, by all means, but it's just it's just a choice I make. I I, I feel much more safe without it most times. If it's really terrible weather and huge waves, I will use it. But today, it will just make the make the deck operation more much more uh, unsafe for me. Anyway, that was a huge job to get that mainsail up. Uh, so I think it's. Uh, it's a cigarette time. It's a cigarette time. Entering the, the night again. We have the platforms around us. We are uh, about halfway now. Uh, we have Ringholme to the south. This way. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Over here. And uh, some other platforms uh, over here on the ship. Engine, engine, engine. Downwind, downwind, and downwind. Look at this. I'm trying to uh, spread the, the mainsail on this side and the headsail on this side. Hello. Uh, we're doing about six, seven knots. So I hope I have diesel enough to, to get to Fair Isle. It looks like uh, the weather reports are gonna keep me running my, my engine. And, uh, yeah, but as long as we can do some six, six seven knots, I'm uh, I'm happy with that. Yeah, so I'm uh, going to go down. I have some rest now, and uh, yeah, have a breathe, eat something, drink something, and we'll see. Uh, See what this cold night will bring us. It is cold all the time, inside or outside. It's so cold uh, all the time. So it's the first time I've been sailing for this long in such a cold weather. But it's a challenge. I love it as usual. I'm having a beautiful experience doing this. Look at this amazing sunset. And uh, I'm uh, sailing straight into it.
Autopilot broke down again. Luckily, I have uh, have this little guy to help me out. But uh, yeah, the drive belt doesn't catch anymore. You just twist the wheel, turn the wheel with the clutch engaged. That's not good. Some something is probably. Uh, something is probably, uh, maybe the dry belt has gone, has uh, snapped or something, I don't know. Anyway, 90 miles to go. It's uh, still downwind, 10 knots, and uh, yeah, it's been a, been a cold, cold night. But I'm alright. You see the stars in the sky, some platforms around here. All those lights are platforms in the British uh, sector now. So we're getting close. Way past halfway now. That feels good. So yeah, I just have to tie up this wheel and uh, hope to, uh, that the little guy here will uh, make our day until we reach uh, Fair Isle. And uh, yeah. Good morning again. What a beautiful day. It's about uh, 3 or 4 uh, degrees uh, Celsius and uh, it's not so cold anymore. And we are now 45 nautical miles away from Fair Isle. So we are getting closer. I've been motoring all night and uh, it has been cold but uh, and I, I ca actually catch some cold too in my throat, I can uh, feel, but it uh, doesn't matter. As long as I'm here and still alive, I'm uh, more than happy. Uh, this is just amazing to experience this. And I can't wait to, uh, before, I can't wait for the ocean to hit uh, the rocks at Fair Isle and to get in there and see the mighty lighthouses on the north and south end of the island. And, uh, 
and also the wild bird life. There's a lot of birds there. That's what the island is most known for, the bird life. Just uh, get inside and uh, get some heat in the boat, get some food. Yeah, life is good. See, ice cold box of spaghetti alla capri to go. Mm. I'm not kidding you, it that tastes so incredibly good after a hard day's work. So incredibly good. Settling Coast Guard, this is the sailing vessel Tessie, Tessie, call sign Lima Echo 3779. Sailing vessel Tessie, this is Shuttle Coast Guard, over. Yes, Settling Coast Guard Tessie, uh, I just want to report my arrival at Fair Isle at 1600. I uh, hope you enjoy your stay and uh, just call us when you depart Fair Isle. Yes, at Lam, uh, Coast Guard, Tessie, uh, Roger that. Roger, thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Have a good afternoon. Shut my Coast Guard then. So that's it, 209 nautical miles in winter, cold, open, blue ocean, North Sea. Can't wait to get inside and have some calm, uh, calm seas around me. It's been a really nice trip. Uh, it's been, uh, been uh, challenging with, uh, with the downwind thing, with, uh, with uh, the boat rocking around. But anyway, you know, when you set your eye on the price, you don't think about it. You think about this. That's what we're going for. So I made it. There's a lot of currents here. Uh, this island separates the North Sea, which is this way to Norway. And we have the North Atlantic here. So there's a lot of currents coming. Maybe you can see it as well. You can see the ocean is pretty stirred around here but now I'm gonna find my way in and uh, make it to port and of course now that's all longing for beer nice ice cold beer see you inside Again, I think uh, I'm heading up to Shetland now uh, on uh, Thursday and uh, back home. Well, well, I'm sober, I guess, sometime next week. Uh, I'm going back to Haugesund. So, uh, I guess I will make some uh, videos about that as well. I can't, I can't help it. I just have to, have to make something. So, I'll post it on uh, YouTube and uh, suggest to stay tuned for the next one. And uh, yeah. Enjoy the scenery at this amazingly beautiful island. You should really come here. It's, I think it's one of the most beautiful places on this earth about. So check it out. Okay, see you next time. Bye bye.
So as we all know, one day everything stops and it is too late. Don't think too much. Don't plan too much. Just pack your bags. Get your ass out there. And go to work. That's the end of part 1, and in part 2, my drone broke down due to a burst strike. A seagull attacked my drone. And that leaves me no other choice than sailing up back to Lurvik Shuttle. Big fucking waves! I bombing us! Buy a new drone, just to sail back down to Fair Isle to get the rest of my shots. And then again, back up to Shuttle. And back again from Fair Isle. Where I was lucky enough to get a hike up to the north end to shoot the incredible landscape and the amazing Michael Flagga lighthouse, which is the most northern point of Great Britain. So if you like this, you will probably enjoy my next video for more NBGS. Stay tuned. <laughs>